funny how you bring health into healing. Because mm -hmm. mental health, emotional health, physical health, spiritual health right. are the entities that makes a man perfect. Right. People always say to me, I can't be perfect. And I say, you're lying. Right. You can be perfect. Perfect does not mean flawless. Perfect means balance. Mm. Now, okay. imperfection, <laughs> we're going to go to this Bible thing. Because okay. I was into the Bible hard, right. then I left, then right. I came, came back. back. And then, then I got my own thing. I got you. And then my own thing, I learned what is truth and what is perception, like you said. Absolutely. So let's go back to health. Okay. You shut down sex which is the caliber means of which man reproduces mm. and, the, and the point to his legacy to find meaning. Mm. In the Bible, Adam never asked for a wife. God said it is good, it is not good for man to be alone. Mm. So because man found his purpose, he was gifted a right. woman. And through that, we told the story of humanity came. Through finding your mental, spiritual, physical, all those health, mm. how did that open the world to you and change your perspective rather than just have you change your life and just live? Um, well, at this point in my healing journey, and I agree with you, there's there's layers of you of all of us right now that's perfect, right? We so, um, and I'm talking about right now, there's a layer of you that's already perfect. It's just, you, we give so much credence to what we call in yoga, the ego, the mind-body phenomena. So you see, I ain't got a million dollars yet, right? I ain't got the dream job, I don't got the dream woman. All these things correlated to just this and this, you base your idea of perfect or balance or imbalance on. But every night you go to sleep, you get kicked out of this. And we normalize that, like, yeah, I just went to sleep, I had a crazy dream, right? But your consciousness literally evicts you every single night out of this layer of the self, right? So I realized that in healing, um, Healing is really about just seeing more of yourself. The more of yourself you see, the more balance naturally falls into your experience. Um, and we on an infinite journey of being able to see more of ourselves. So when I got to that point where I realized that's what healing is really about, I realized that the world is a mirror of my consciousness, right? Science already knows this. And it's funny that you keep saying this is not gonna be your average interview because most rappers is not talking on this level. Um, and it don't make me bigger and better than anybody. It's just these are the conversations we got to start having even within hip hop to go to the next level. Um, but science already knows, it's documented. Y'all can check out the double slit experiment if you don't believe me. Like I'm a quantum, quantum physics nut too. Like I'm a nerd at the end of the day too. But science already knows your world is a hologram, right? There is no external world the way we perceive it. And when you realize your reality, your physical reality is literally spilling forth out of your own consciousness. Everybody, everything, every place, every experience becomes a mirror, right? So when I say healing is seeing more of yourself, I don't mean the mind-body phenomena. I don't mean just docs, right? I mean, Karev, I mean my, my G over here. I mean everything I encounter is a piece of myself. And if somebody cuts me off in the middle of the road and I get pissed off and I shout out that person and I'm cursing them out, I'm cursing out a piece of myself, right? If a piece of my world is not in balance, it's a piece of me, something within me that is not in balance and reflecting and projecting into my physical reality. So healing, seeing more of yourself and realizing yourself is all, right? That's why AL is at the end of heal, all. Right? That's interesting because then as an artist, we must look deeper into the intent in which we create Facts. and which we show off. Facts. Dr. Lilla is not only a man, father, husband, patriarch, motivator, teacher. He's also a representation of the reality in which entertainment personifies. Mm. Let's talk about supposition okay. and what you showed in that movie. <laughs> talk about your character. Um, Sneak, Bad Breath Sneak. So Sneak is, um, he pretty much represents um, what I was striving to be before my evolution. And what I mean by that, like I was out here in the streets um, I feel like pretty much 90% of the men in urban areas like a Newark, like an East Orange. Um, and most of us wind up being the same. Different expressions of the same attributes, but pretty much the same shit. And I, I always say our error was to get money, fuck bitches out, right? So a large part of why I was sexually out of control and had to realize that was because of that mantra. 
And there was a point in my journey where, way before my evolution, where I was actually ashamed of not having a record. I've never have, at that point, I've never gone to jail, I've never gotten locked up, never sold the pack. Like, I was embarrassed by that, you know what I'm saying? Because at that time, that was, and still to this day, it's just kind of morphed a little bit. But that's what made us valuable as men, especially being in the hood. Like, I, I, the first people most of us look up to was drug dealers, was pimps, was hustlers, like those who was getting it and looked like they was getting it. Um, so in supposition, Sneak, even though he was intelligent, just like I was at the time, but the thing with knowledge is if you're not applying it, it never becomes, like you said before, wisdom, right? And it's not going to change anything. It's just going to be a bunch of information in your head. And Sneak represents somebody who had that knowledge but wasn't in the stage of implementing it and kind of succumbing to his, his environment and his, and his reality. Um, but you still, I still, at least when the role was presented to me, and shout out to uh, Tony, the filmmaker, um, James, who put me into that role, um, when I was reading Sneak's lines and reading his backstory, I saw the potential in him. Just like now, looking back at that version of myself, there was loads of untapped potential. Just like when I ride down Springfield Ave and I'm in the neck and I'm in the hood, I don't see these dirty little niggas on the street that a lot of us paint that story when we see them. I see kings, I see guys that just haven't tapped into that divine ability yet. So that's what Sneak represented to me in Supposition. Supposition and the EP Paradox to me goes hand in hand. Okay. And the reason why is because we all have a starting point. Mm. Some of us hit a pistol, mm. some of us don't. Mm. And while people elevate or travel okay. on their, in their journey of life, others don't. Okay. The sad part is we turn around and pass the baton and there's no one there. No, no, we haven't finished our own race yet. Mm. What was the step that you took we talked about the physical now. Let's go into more of the higher level. What was the step that you took that made the light bulb go off where you started to change everything based on this one phenomenon? The first time I felt subtle energy. Talk um, about it. And I think at this point, most people in the world have heard of the term chi, right? We Dragon Ball Z, karate movies, all that. Street people that have at least heard that term. When I asked that in classes, most people yeah. heard chi. I prefer the term prana, um, and it's multiple names throughout different ethnicities from around the world for the same thing, the subtle energy in the body. And I prefer the term prana because it breaks down the P-R-A, it's a Hindu term, Sanskrit word. Um, it breaks down into the P-R-A represents first, the A and A represents smallest unit of energy. What's the smallest unit of energy in the human body? Teach me. We all had it in science class, start with Teach an A, four letter word. Teach me. Adam. Bro. Right? Just um, teach. So I want to try. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. So prana, and that was more so for the audience. Um, so prana, subtle energy. And when I talk about subtle energy, people think it's something so mystical and magical, which it is. But think about the last time you was upset, right? Um, the things that happen in your body when you get upset, right? And us as black people, one of the first things we say is, such and such made me hot, right? You literally get hot when you get upset. Sometimes to the point where you start to beat up with sweat. Sometimes you profusely start to sweat, right? What's some other indications? Tightness. Tightness, right? Tension in the body. You may get a headache. You may get a migraine. The breath, it either it does one or two things. You either shallow. hyperventilate or shallow, yeah. stop breathing, breath constricts all together, right? And most times if you're upset, you want to get that energy out in the form of punching, kicking, beating somebody ass, shooting, stab, whatever that is for you, whatever level you at. But these are all indications of us experiencing subtle energy all the time. We just haven't um, compartmentalized it in our minds and our spirits as that's what it being. And um, the first time I really like felt it for myself because I was desperate when I took the first class I took on yoga and meditation. I never thought I'd be this person. I had no conscious desire at any point in my life until I was at the breaking point again, like my final breaking point where I was going to attempt suicide again. Um, where I was extended this free class and I started to learn these precepts. In the first class, everybody was seeing dragons and unicorns and hearing bells and whistles. I ain't see and feel nothing. I kept it a butt, like I don't see none of this shit, bro. Like I don't know what y'all are talking about. But I was desperate and I feel like people either learn two ways, through inspiration or desperation. Most of us gotta be desperate to really absorb information. So I was desperate, I knew if that didn't work, I wouldn't be here in front of this camera right now. Um, so within a five week program, I think it was like the second or third week we was doing certain techniques. And 
and all of a sudden, I started to feel what people was talking about they was feeling in my shoulder, all of a sudden in my knee, it started to flow through my whole body. And I was at a point where I wasn't willing to, I've never been the type of person to front, especially about something like that. So I knew if I felt it, it was no longer just somebody saying, okay, this is real for me. It became real for me in that moment. And that took it from the chore of meditation, oh, I gotta do this for this result. At that point, it started to become a true relationship. Like when a man is courting a woman and that feeling she get when he offers her the flowers or he comes to pick her up and surprise her from work, you know what I'm saying? That feeling she get, that was the sensation I started to get via that subtle energy. And I ain't need no woman to do it. I ain't need no award to do it. I ain't need to perform in front of 10,000 people to do it. Just with the energy that was already in me, did it for me. So that's when really things really started to shift for me. Higher level. Subtle energy is the beginning of the inner child coming through. Absolutely. And when the inner child comes through, true growth happens on the highest level. Mm. How has your inner child made you a better MC though? Um, in my later work that has not been released yet that we're working towards, um, and I had this conversation with my big bro who saw the potential in me as an artist before I saw it in myself. And he always say like, yo, the difference between you now is then you were still fired, but you was, I feel like you was trying to say some hot shit, right? Now you just, you just talk your shit. You just talk where you at. And that, we do a technique in my classes where we do two rounds of just jumping, right? And even when I'm describing that process to my class, you can already see these grown people that may be stressed out, not really vibing what we're what we doing yet. And as soon as, as soon as I start to talk about yo, we just gonna jump. The smile start to come on the fit. That inner child rushes to the surface because it knows it has an opportunity. And think about the frequency of a child. Child is gonna say whatever's on the child. You got a book in your, ooh, you got, you know what I mean? Like child not holding nothing back, no filter, no representative, no facade. So now with my music, and even though I always did some semblance of infusing food into what I do, at this point, it's not about a record deal. It's not about if you like it or not, right? It's about what I need to say in that moment that's gonna be beneficial for me, that's gonna make me feel good. And whether it's a, a frivolous song that I just wanna make people bounce around because those is valid too, or it's one of them ones where I gotta dig deep as long as I'm honoring myself. And shout out to my man, Vertical Jones. I don't know if you had him on yet. I'm trying. Gold tape, let's have go. Him on gold tape, right? <laughs> But he had a, a podcast at a certain point, um, The Sound University. And my favorite one that he did, it was called Push the Kanye Button. And he talked about the fact that as an artist, um, when you first make a song, at whatever level you at, you make that song, and it's the hottest shit you ever heard in your life. Right, you like, bruh, ain't nobody got no shit better this, than this in the whole world, right? And you listen to it for that day, for that week, until it's time to let somebody else hear that record. Right? And all that power, all that enthusiasm, all that inner child that, that connected you to that frequency, as soon as it's time for somebody else to listen to it, it's like, damn, it's, are they gonna like it? And all that power you had just leaves and you give it to them. If they say, you know what? I don't know, that's just cool. You gonna feel like, you know what? That's just a cool record. I was bugging, right? And at the last men's meeting, I had somebody say something super point. I think it was based on the Travis Barker. He got like a new documentary out about, you know, his his claim to fame, his growth to fame. And he talked about the fact that all music is good music, right? And I had never had this thought. And what he meant by that was how it was, it was explained to me. There was a time where he couldn't give his shit away, right? But when the right vehicle and machine got around him and people started to perceive that same music in a different light, Kanye went through the same thing. DMX, Drake, all these people go through the same shit. Once it's marketed a certain way, you, you get opened up to that demographic that was waiting on what it is you do. Now, everybody's still not gonna rock with you. Not everybody loves Drake, the biggest artist in the, hip hop artist in the world right now, right? But there's a demographic, there's a group of people on this earth that's waiting for what it is specifically that you do. If you could just honor that inner child, if you can honor that inner truth, you'll make your way to that demographic, to that group of people, and you'll be a star to them. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs>